Hey, it's 1035 to beat mommy's new number one for hip hop RB in the Breakfast Club. Like, I want to say Berg, right? But, like, <laughs> you got because, that. Because that's how I know him. Yeah. But, you know, he's definitely transcended. And, and listen, personally, Berg was dope artist to me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. But uh, you definitely have moved on and um man wow what a what a story and i and i want to dive right into that story hitmaker hitmaker <laughs> there you go yeah for sure and that's what you're affectionately known as yes. now yes sir um let, let's let's dial it back man because uh, i got the uh fortunate opportunity to interview you years ago man, hell yeah. as berg um you know what how did you first start off you know getting into the rap game Right, so um, I got my first little kickoff with DMX. Shout out to DMX, rest in peace, man. Um, I was signed to DMX Bloodline Records off Def Jam, and that was just a great experience for me to be able to learn a bunch of different things. Then when we actually met, I ended up um, parting ways with X, and I moved to L.A., and I was just out there, and then my song, Sexy Lady, became the number one song in L.A. independently, yep. and then I got my label deal with Epic Records, and they sent me on a whirlwind. That's how we ended up meeting, and then from there, Sexy Ken out of business, and all that other stuff happened from there, man. It, but that was the little sneak creep in, you know? So where where you from originally? I'm from the south side of Chicago, but like I feel like you know, like of course that's home. But even in them times, as a young kid, I, I um moved to New York at probably like 14, 15. Then, like I said, I moved to L.A. and I've been living in L.A. for there for the rest of my life. You know, absolutely, man, dope artist, man. You had a bunch of bangers. Yeah. Um, what happened after? that stretch of, of the music so um to me personally like um i decided to just to be um man i'm, I'm a hustler man at, at heart and i really love music and i'm a music man so i never really seen myself being an artist and for my whole career i always wanted to be like a la reed a barry gordy a craig cowman and all these wow. different people behind the scenes that i studied and really like put in that work and watched all the documentaries so i always seen myself there for longevity so at that point i was just randomly here in Miami, I ain't gonna lie, man. Shout out to my dog Brian McKinney. He moved me down here to Miami to help me with my producing and all this other stuff. And I just randomly said hitmaker one time on a record. And then from there, it just kind of like turned into spinning off to me changing it. Cause I felt like the product was always good, but they personally just didn't want it from me. So you know mm. what you gotta do? You gotta put that product in somebody else's hands. And the man, looking back now, I'm uh, it's a hundred million records sold now, ten billion streams from then and now. I saw you unveil your plaque yeah. with that beautiful background. Where yeah. were you there? That was I was late? in my pants in the wrist. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. One of them. Yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that, and, I, and um, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I saw that, my heart filled in joy because you know, obviously, I know your path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know your grind. Um, from what I could see, um, what was that first hit as as hit maker that was like? Psh. I think the one that I had a bunch of hits like leading up to this one, but um, once I did Big Sean bounce back, I think that that record kind of like because it was placed in Super Bowl commercials, it had heavy licensing and sync on it. Like that's my first time get doing a record and like seeing a check like the residual like five hundred grand. I'm wow. like, whoa! <laughs> like I, I never expected that, and it was a crazy moment even doing that because. I was in the process of buying my first home when that record came out, you know, and then, um, like, I, I remember, like, my business manager called me, like, man, I don't know, we might not be able to make this happen. And I was like, what? what, what is, what's going on? But I was in the studio working, so I didn't want to get caught up in that. He called me back the next day. He was like, boy, he's got a check for $500,000. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Say less. <laughs> Shout out to Big Sean, Smash Dave, and Metro Boom, and all y'all involved, you know? That's what's up. So, you know, would you say that there's more money in producing or rapping since you've done both at a high level? Man, I think it's money on both ends. I think it's a lot of money for everybody to eat, but ultimately, for me, my heart is just in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, even right now, like, just being out and meeting you and, like, doing all this different stuff, like, I'm really a music man. Like, I really love this. Like, I love every aspect of the game. So, to me, man, I mean, my heart is in writing and producing and being an executive and putting on new talent. And actually, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love, I think through my songs, I'm able to influence new artists that are doing it, but I would love to get give opportunity to my people that I work with, my co my creators that I co-write songs with and people that are songwriters. Because, yeah. of course, I, I think every songwriter that's just actually actively doing it now ultimately had aspired to be an artist. But, you know, you got to sneak in the game somehow the same way I snuck in as Hitmaker. So, to me, it's just about putting on the next, you know? That's what's up. So, was there somebody that when you were an artist 
that maybe wasn't rocking with you and then you became this big producer, the hit maker, and then they had to come kind of crawl back in. I mean, I think uh, at some point, like, yeah, like a lot of artists wasn't rocking with me at some right. point. But I mean, now it's like, this is just a true testimony and a true story of just like, man, hard work, dedication, keeping God first in your life. It's like, like I, I couldn't even, I wouldn't even care who had a problem with me now because now I'm at this elevated level. And like, of course, certain people will be like, nah, forget y'all. I ain't dealing with him. Right, I ain't working right, with right. him. Nah, man, it's open arm embrace, man. People, people always have their own perception of things, you know, and you always gotta be open to growth, man. Like, man, you know what, that happened. Look forward, you know what I'm saying, and just persevere through the whole situation. Well, what was one of the wild situations that happened with you, you know, working in the studio? I know sometimes the studio um, can get crazy. Yeah, I, I always say, I, I don't know, I just told this little story, a million dollars worth of game, but like, I um I, I when we were doing Sexy Can I, I'm gonna take it back because on some Youngberg time. Uh, right. We were doing Sexy Can I, I actually hated the record. I got the record and the record was just Ray J singing for like two bars and it was a empty beat and then he was singing for four more bars and it was just an empty beat so i got the record i walked from um the lowe's hotel to uh to wet willies and just mm. basically like was throwing bars around with my friends shout out to billy j shout out to cap one and just all the people that was with me and we was just really laughing making a joke out the record so then from there we went i laid the record at circle house shout out to bb my brother and then from there we went and we was in la and ray j by the time the song was completed when i put the whole song together the man had just signed his porno deal with Vivid, like this after the Kim Kardashian <laughs> and stuff like that or whatever. So he was a different guy. The energy was different. And he just, I, I walked in, I had a, a female friend with me, and he had his female friend with him. And he was like, he just w grabbed his book bag, a Louis Vuitton bag, and just dumped out a bag full of DVDs from Vivid, porn company or whatever. <laughs> and was like, yo, you know how we got the TV on right here on yeah. um, we're watching it? He like, man, I don't want I don't mean no disrespect, but uh, you know what? This is my vibe right now. So I wanna watch this, but I don't wanna disrespect your girl. I'm like, nah, you can play it on. So he had like, and it wasn't even black people having sex, it was like straight, like hardcore <laughs> white porn or whatever playing while we did sexy can I. And that's how we finished the song. Oh my God, that's a great <laughs> story. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Nah, for sure. Um, they just finished doing a, a versus. Yeah, uh, for sure. Ray J, did you get a chance to check that out? Hey man, I was there. He brought me out and like set me up to do "Sexy Can I" with him. Like I, rem I went there and like I was really going to support because it's BET weekend. Right, and, like, right. I'm standing on the side of the stage and like for some reason they keep tapping me, keep handing me Casamigos, keep handing me tequila shots, and then Ray was like, "Yo, I'm gonna play this song and I think you should come out and do it." So. Wow. I I came out and did it you know like but to me i was asking my team the whole time like is this off brand like i don't want to do this blah 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 blah. not because i couldn't go and actually get it done right, but right it was just like i'm super on my executive level right now i'm super on my just behind the scenes thing so i don't want to conf confuse the people but when i did it i was actually happy i did it because one that versus is going down in history is one of the funniest verses yes, that you'll ever is. be able to see <laughs> in your life and then not only that um it kind of hit people like to the average consumer, like, whoa, yeah, Young Berg is hit maker, yeah, like, yeah. oh wow, so yeah. it was one of them moments because that that happened to me not at mm -hmm. that moment, uh -huh. like a while back. Um, I kept on hearing, you know, yeah, yeah, joints sure. with hit maker, hit maker, mm -hmm. and then I was like, who's this hit maker? Uh -huh. And then when I was like, oh, yeah, Berg, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. So, it, so I'm happy that happened for you, nah, me you know? too, man. A lot of times people don't know. Um, Explain to, to my lovely audience your, your, your beautiful um, this is, uh, chain and pendant. So, um, honestly, when I left, well, I was vice president of Atlantic Records for four years. I was able to do beautiful work with them. Shout out to Lion Ray, Craig Calvin, um, Dallas, uh, Mike Kaiser, everybody, Julie, everybody that's over there. And um, we did a bunch of big records, Meek Mill, Dangerous, A Boogie, look back at it, amongst others. I've sold millions and millions of records with them. But... We kind of came to a crossroads to where like our both our visions wasn't aligning up, and I was in the midst of re renegotiating. They gave me a label deal, but um, I just didn't feel like they believed in me all the way. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? I think I felt like they wanted just to keep me around just for the hits. Which right, any right. real record company, I ain't even mad at you for thinking like that because. I wanted them to purchase me a studio. Like, yo, mm -hmm. if you believe in me and I'm keeping the lights on with these hits, Invest purchase me. me the studio, build with me, a la DJ Drama, a la what L.A. Reid did for uh, Tricky Stewart, which showed out to be a great investment for L.A. Reid because it paid off for them on Tricky level. He went and recently just sold his studio and made a, a huge uh, profit on that. So I wanted them to believe in me like that. Didn't work out. 
I happened to go to San Francisco for a meeting, and I just to see Gazi um, with my partner Chris Sean, and we had mm. a conversation, and we kind of shared same uh, similar stories about hardships in the music industry, and then I just told him like, yo, they just gave me a bunch of money, and um, yeah, I, I wanna, I, I'm not happy there. I might stay, or I'm gonna give them the money back. Right. And like everybody in the music business was like, bro, like. Get the money, money back. back. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, but I believed in me so much. I'm like, they don't, they're like, bro, you, you're not finna just get nobody some M's right, back. Right, like, right. No, y'all gotta figure that out. But I was like, man, I'm gonna give it back. And um, guys, he came through and was like, nah, you ain't gotta do none of that. And he bought me out my deal. And from there, man, we just been able to have a, a blessed relationship together. We um ended up doing, I'm, I became vice president of that company. We ended up doing Baddest by Blue with 2 Chains and Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. Peru uh, with Fireboy and Ed Sheeran. <laughs> then also um Tink, all Tink, Tink's new single with 2 Chains and her new album that's coming out right now. And I was able to executive produce that. So, and then now my new single and my new record. So it's just been a great situation. Yeah, man. Shout out to Gazi yeah. as well on that. Um, So you are doing your thing and you mentioned earlier that you bringing other people with you, songwriters uh -huh. yeah. and, and other artists. Uh, feel free to talk about that. Yeah, and, for and sure. The different people that you you're involved. So in. to me, like everything that I got going on is just like it's, it's just family business. You know, like uh, sometimes you know, like I, I'll end up meeting somebody maybe six months ago that could be super tight with me than somebody I might met six years ago. But I'm just a true believer in talent and letting it overshine all. So even with my new single, it's called Down Bad. It features um, Jeremiah and Fabulous and my guy Ivory Scott. Ivory Scott's been influential with a lot of records that I've done this year, from Baddest to Peru. So I felt like, man, like, let's just keep my dog on a record. And Absolutely. I'm in position to where I can do that. So, like, why did I do that? You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be one of the first producers that's in this era and this culture right now that's doing that. And that's what I'm doing with Ivory, as well as my sister Rocky. She signed Empire as well. And as well as my dog with me right now, Ace Red. You know, me and Ace have been on a, a slew of hits on records that we can't even really talk about, you know what I'm saying? We don't <laughs> right. want to spoil it, but you know, Ace just did a um Ace just did a great deal himself, you know, and 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 I see him as as one of the guys that's next, you know, or not only just as a pin behind the scenes, but he has his own swag and his own um his own stuff that he want need to splash on a, on a music business in general, you know? Listen, it seems like you are like unstoppable, bro. Nah, for um, real. You know, when you're moving at that space and at that speed where, you know, things are happening for you, you're having like this great run. Uh -huh. What are some of your like biggest fears, you know? Like, um, I really don't have no fears, bro, because I'm I'm young Berg still. Like, right. y'all, the, the world's just catching up. You know what I'm saying? I'm hit maker, but I've been through so many trials and tribulations like we spoke about earlier. My name was Iceberg when I was signed to DMX, and then now my name transitioned to Youngberg. Eve named me Youngberg. Then from there, like, I'm hit maker. So, like, I've been through a, a real life story with mm. this music business. So, to me, I think when people fall off, or the only fear is stop working. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got foot on gas, like we right here, we doing interviews. We when we leave this interview, we going to the studio right now. I got eleven records at radio right now while this is happening. But yeah. I'm still in the studio <laughs> every day. Like it like I like I don't have a hit at all. Right. And you and like you said several times, you love this. Yeah. I just want to notate the fact that during this interview, you've been showing love to so many people and I really respect that about uh -huh. you. Yeah. It's like you don't leave anybody behind and you uh -huh, remember sure. people who helped you along the way. So nah, I, I just want to give you a gold roses on that. Appreciate that. Um, can you give me a memorable moment with DMX, you know? Man, there's so many. Uh, I, Man, well, I was a virgin. He took my first piece of action from me. And, and <laughs> when I was in Toronto, we were shooting. A, I was I was, I was, was about to get it done. I was about to steal, steal the deal. Right. He took my first piece of action from me. <laughs> um, uh, That's so sound yeah. like DMX. Yo, and then, yeah. um, man, what, what, what a crazy story. When I first met DMX, I met him at What They Want from a uh whatever video and yeah. everybody was there and i never forget um he, he put me in a car he's like shorty you riding with me and this is my first time ever meeting uh ray j we went to a brandy concert and ray j was there and like i'll never forget we were in la the method man was in the front seat he was driving i was in the back with his um with his guy ali and it was the craziest car ride i ever been in in my life i thought i was gonna die <laughs> dipping in and out of traffic driving 100 miles an hour like everything y'all see on belly or whatever that right, was right. really the dog like don't get it don't get it messed up like dmx was one of the realest ones ever and it was super blessed because before he passed 
we ended up re- getting back together and we ended up making music together. I ended up seeing him in Atlanta. So me and DMX got a few unreleased records. I reached out. I spoke with his family. I spoke with um a, a few different people. So you never know how that's going to go. But right. y'all will possibly hear some new music from Hitmaker and DMX, not that's Youngberg beautiful. and DMX. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, who is a, a artist that, you know, you're on a roll right now. Uh-huh. Almost anybody would love to work with you. Who's an artist that you would like to work with? Um, Man, uh, just all the ladies, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. I feel like the women is winning right now. You know, we got oh, a sure. we got a long range of records. We've worked with Megan Thee Stallion. We've worked with um, we've worked with Cardi B. We've worked with uh, City Girls. We've worked with Lakia. We've worked with Mulatto. We've worked with uh, so I mean all the girls. You know what I'm saying? I, I I welcome that as well as the R&B girls as well too. You know, it's a couple um. Artists that I might not have tapped in on the R&B side, but um, directly, I've worked Ooh. indirectly with her. I've worked um, indirectly with a few different other people, but I love, like, man, I, I love Jasmine Sullivan, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Just different different vibes, you know? I want to tap in, and I want to work with Rhapsody, too. I think she's a dope rapper. I yeah. just want to work with all the females, you know? That's what's up. Um, let everybody know the name of your single yeah. and, and how they could connect with you, please. Hey, man, you know what it is. Your boy hit making a building. It's my new single, man, Down Bad featuring Fabulous. Jeremiah, Ivory Scott, man, off my new project coming real soon. This is what summer 2022 sounds like. We back outside fully 100%. And you can follow me wherever you want. If you want to do it on Instagram, Hitmaker, H-I-T-M-A-K-A. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Hitmaker, but underscore Hitmaker. And, yo, man, follow me, man, because it's a real journey. Or just go type in Iceberg, Youngberg, <laughs> Hitmaker on your YouTube and watch my whole journey, man. Use this as a testimony, man. God is real, you know? It's an amazing journey, too. I want to thank you for all your contributions to the music that I love, hip-hop and R&B, oh, all that you've you, done, bro. man. You're, you're, you're a true success story. You're a true story of hope and, and, and never giving up and, and keep trying and pushing and how you can uh, really... Push through in this business, man. man pop. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you, my brother. Yes, love, brother. Yes, sir. Hit Mega. <laughs> <laughs> did I do that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> All right, man. <sighs>